Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi everybody, this is a video I've wanted to do for a really long time. Um, and in this video, I want to kind of show you how you can um, be inspired and take pe pictures similar to uh, the great David Bailey and I guess Richard Avedon and lots of other photographers as well, which is basically um, portraits of people against a nice bright white background. It's really simple to do, um, you don't need that much kit, but I'll kind of show you how I'm doing it here and you can get really great results and take photos that people go, you know, oh wow, that, that looks looks really cool, really stylish, you can play around with it. Um, so yeah, so let's have a look at the kind of kit um, that I've got set up here to take a David Bailey-esque portrait. So let's have a look at what we can see. So I've got my camera set up on the tripod. Again, I'm working by myself today. I haven't got a <laughs> a model or a subject to help me, so kind of I am the subject. So I have to apologise for that first. Obviously, if you're working um, with, with a with a model or something like that, or your family members or friends, you might not necessarily want to use a uh, a, a tripod. But the problem is, you see, say this is a typical front room in Britain on a semi-detached house, very very small. We haven't got much room to play around with, and so we've got my camera here. We've got my light stand there with a flash on the top and then you can see the this, this chair for our subject and you might just be able to see a flash on the back of the chair because it, what that's doing is the critical thing which is lighting up this, this backdrop. Now this backdrop is just an old um, projector screen that I bought from a car boot sale years ago. Very very reflective, very good for creating simple white backdrops. Now you don't have to have something like this, you could use a white sheet, um, some paper, you could use a wall, you know, a nice plain wall you can blast the flash against. You could use a window and overexpose for it outside. Lots of different ways of doing it. But as you can see, this is quite quite um, compact. And what you've always got to remember is, kind of what the camera sees will be... Let me just turn this on so you can kind of see what the camera sees. We'll, we'll, we'll see that um, with the edges. But, you know, with most of Bailey's uh, photos, they tend to be cropped square. And in fact, to kind of help me with the inspiration... What you see down here is one of David Bailey's books. Look, and again, you know, I'm not trying to copy da whoop, not trying to copy David Bailey's work, but I'm just trying to get inspired by it because if you if you kind of um, follow what other photographers do, the greats, and have a go at seeing it, what happens is you start to introduce your own style. So that's the general setup. So we've got the camera, light stand, one flash there, one flash there, and the backdrop. Um, so let's have a look, look a little more detail at the different bits. This is the light stand with a shoot through umbrella on it and then I've got one of my Young Nuo flashes on it. Um, remember with this sort of thing you can get away with really cheap flashes, you just want manual flashes and you might be able to see on the back of this one that it's set to slave 2 mode so it's going to trigger off the camera's pop-up flash and it's about, uh, and it's about what, the third way up in terms, of, in terms of power and that's shooting down towards here. And if we come over here, there we've got the nice white backdrop. And then we've got my other flash here, which you can just kind of just about see. And it's aimed up at the backdrop to, to, to basically blast the flash against it to white it out. And that one's set really low. It's only set at, uh, at the first power setting, again on slave 2. So it just triggers off the, uh, the pop-up flash. And then what we've got over here, actually, we've got another light stand. Because when you're working by yourself, you're going to be using manual focus. And you can't often... Um, see uh, how you meant to focus but if you pop that on the chair roughly where you're you'll be sitting it means that you can um, manually focus and that you know you're going to get it spot on so let's look at the camera next so this is my camera it's a canon 600d dslr but the ideas go the same for everything you notice i've got the pop-up flash up because what happens is when that fires even though it's a ttl flash when the, the pop-up ones so it'll fire a couple of strobes it will trigger both that flash there the kind of main flash and the backdrop flash there and then this flash will act as a little bit of fill as well. Now, I'm in manual mode, but don't worry, it's all very easy. If I just turn it on, you can kind of see the settings I've got on. So in manual mode, I'm shooting at 1 200th of a second, because that's the maximum flash sync speed of these flashes. I'm shooting at f8 to give me a chance of having a decent depth of field, so that if I'm moving backwards and forwards, or your subject is moving backwards and forwards, um, while you take, take it, things are still going to be in focus. Now, I'm shooting way up at ISO 800. Normally, I wouldn't shoot this this high, but this is just for the, the sake of the video, so I can pop off lots of flashes um, and um, and not drain the batteries on the flash. Basically, as, as you push your ISO higher, or 
make your aperture bigger. Your flashes, you can turn the power down over your flashes so they'll last longer that way. I'm going to be using um, kind of live view so I can see what's going on and you can see I've set it up with the histograms and stuff. And in fact what I'm looking for, if we go back to a photo I've just kind of taken of yours truly, if we bring up uh, the info on it, what I'm looking for is is the blinkies here just to make sure the white background is started to blow out. As you can see actually I might need to re-aim the flash a little bit because it's only really blowing out above my left shoulder and I want it to be nice and white all the way around me. And Just remember I will be cropping it as well um, to get that square uh, David, David Bailey look. And then what you can do is you can flick it round so that as you're sitting in front of the camera you can see what's going on. Um, as far as settings, other settings go uh, I've got the, so I'll bring up the, turn my view off, I've got the, uh, I think it's a 10 second timer on the thing, and my white balance is set to flash, ah right, and what I've also done is I've turned the exposure compensation down on the pop-up flash, because I don't want this blasting me with harsh light, because obviously it's harsh, but I do need it powerful enough to uh, to trigger the two other strobes, but I do need it as fill as well, because normally what would happen is you would have You'd have your main light there, and you'd also have some sort of fill filling from the other side to make it not too dark. And then you might have a, a backlight as well, that, that, which I'm not really using. But I'm getting a bit of backlight from the flash bouncing off the reflector. But as we can see, you know, from some David Bailey's photos, like this one of Jack Nicholson, that lighting is pretty harsh on that, and there are some really deep shadows. Um, so that's it, really. Um, and let's uh, take a photo. Okay, so I've triggered the, the camera. It's flashing on me. I've got to make my pose. You can see me in the mirror there. <laughs> yeah! Try and do a duck Jack Nicholson. And let's go round and let's have a look. Let's play it back. See what we got. So, th so there's me, nice and black and white. And then let's have a look at the info. Get the blinkies up. Yeah, so a large section of the background is, is blown out and I can play around with that. Now, one thing I completely forgot to mention that is incredibly important. You're saying, wait a minute, Rob, you're shooting in black and white, aren't you? What's going on? You've got a digital camera. Now, this is a really good little trick you can use when you're doing this sort of thing so you can see what you're getting. Let's get rid of that. Let's just zoom in to just check the focus. Yeah, that's fine. And what you can do is although you're seeing black and white here, or blue and white because the white balance is a little bit off on this uh, uh, video camera. Ooh, what are we doing? Let's come out of there. What you do is if you go into your settings for your camera and set the, the quality to RAW, or RAW and JPEG, it doesn't really matter, the camera will always take the pictures and um, there will be colour. All the colour information will be there. But if you go into the, the picture style settings, again, check your camera to see how you do it. But with the, um, with the Canon, you kind of press, uh, you press that button there. And you set your picture style to monochrome. So what happens then is, when you actually take a picture with your, with your camera, um, and, and it fires off, when it's in RAW mode, it'll take the picture and you'll have all the colour there. But then, because you've set a picture style, the, the kind of the preview JPEG that is stored with the RAW file is in black and white. How cool is that? So there we go. That's how you can do your own black and white or colour. Well, you know, you could do some nice headshots a la, um, um, uh, what's his name, Peter Hurley, with a really simple setup at home in a really small room. I mean, this room is tiny. I've just got barely enough to stagger, room to stagger around my camera. Um, you've got one ca camera on a tripod there, one simple manual flash on slave there, one simple flash over there that's dropped down a bit, a little chair for the subject, and then some sort of white backdrop to give you that Bailey-esque look. Okay, so that's enough from me. If you've got any questions or comments about the video with how to do this sort of stuff or ideas of your own, please put them down below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, please hit subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.